I'm going to go ahead and record this presentation and say hello again to everybody. Welcome to this expert presentation entitled How to Win the Game, Beat Procrastination, Slay Distraction, and Protect the Clock. We're so glad you're able to join us. My name is Alex, and I'll be your moderator for this presentation. Uh, this session will be recorded and posted on the FairStop site for you to return to and watch again. Um, that'll also be helpful to the individuals who are unable to make today's uh, stream. The Learning Differences Virtual College Fair will remain open through the spring, so you can return to it at any time to watch this, watch this presentation all through the spring. This session is being presented on Zoom webinar. All attendees are automatically muted to avoid unnecessary or inappropriate background noise. If you wish to participate, you will see the toolbar at the bottom, including an icon labeled Q&A. If you click on that now, a new window will open up so you can use that function as needed so you can ask questions that come up during the webinar. This webinar will run for about 30 minutes and we'll leave about 15 to 10 at the end for questions. I will be monitoring the Q&A and we'll post the most commonly asked questions to our expert presentation uh, presenters today. Today, we're honored to host Lawan Bradford, Director of Academic Support, Lee University, and Angela Wartrup, Director of LEAP Trio Grant, Lee University. On behalf of the Learning Differences event sponsor, Go to College Fairs, I'd like to extend them a very warm welcome. Thank you both so much for joining us, and I will pass it along to you and we can begin. Hello, so happy to be with you tonight. As stated, my name is Dr. Lawan Bradford. I'm the Director of Academic Support at Lee University. My role is to make sure students with documented disabilities have academic accommodations. I support students all along the way, their college career. This is my friend and colleague, Dr. Waltrip. Yes, I'm Dr. Angela Waltrip. I'm the Director of Elite Program here at Lee here at our school. And uh, th this is a federally funded TRIO program for students who may qualify because they are first generation, perhaps income qualifying or disability. Some of you may have been in a TRIO program at your school. Upward Bound is a TRIO program. Well, at the college level, there are also TRIO programs. Tonight, we want to begin this idea of making sure we do well in our studies by starting with an agenda, we want to give you an idea of where we're going. We've already introduced ourselves. The next thing we're going to do is talk about time wasters, because all people struggle with wasting time. The next thing is hit six ways to protect the clock. After we address those, we'll discuss, you have these strategies, but how do you implement them to become an effective student? And finally, we're going to put it all together with your questions. So let's talk about time wasters. Uh, we all have them and we all struggle with them. The first one is that phone. That phone can kill time almost like none other. On social media apps, pick your favorite, we can waste time. We can also waste time with video games or outside games. You might like both, you might like one over the other. Those can be time wasters. Also sleeping too much, we need sleep, yes, but sleeping too much can waste time. As much as we love our friends, if we only give time to our friends, they can kill our time. And also volunteering is a beautiful thing to do, but if we overextend, our job is a beautiful thing to have, but if we overextend, they actually become time wasters. So what is your time waster? Identifying what is keeping you from studying. That's the first thing to do to beat procrastination. What is it? Let's put it to the side and let's hit some strategies. Six ways to protect the clock. You ready to go? Yes. Here we go. Let's protect that clock. We're going to show you what we're going to talk about this evening. The worst first calendars, making a to do list, preparing and cleaning, they go hand in hand, budgeting our time, and setting those goals. So I'm curious which one is your favorite. Um, I think my favorite is the to do list. I like making lists. Do you have a favorite? Mm -hmm. I think preparing and cleaning. Okay, it's important. so I'm curious what your favorite is. We're going to hit all six of them. We're going to start with this idea of worst to first. 
my favorite example is a mama. She is going to feed that baby the broccoli first and then the cookie, the worst first, and then the dessert. That's the same thing with us. Whatever is your worst thing to do, we do it first. This other idea is doing the hardest first. The hardest first. And this is something that I like to do, Dr. Bradford. When I come into work, I think of what is the hardest first. So as a student, you're wanting to excel in your academics. You might struggle in reading or feel like you struggle in reading. So that might be the attempt that you want to make first, whether it's reading or if it's math, start with your math first. If it's science or even a foreign language, think in your mind, I'm going to do the hardest first. That way, at the end of your study time, then you have some respite and some time to breathe a little easier. Mm -hmm. And then you can hit those classes that aren't so hard. You can study those later. And speaking of later, we want to do it sooner, not later. Those harder things we want to do when the sun is out, mm -hmm. because what takes us one hour to do in the daytime takes us an hour and a half, two hours to do at nighttime. We are not owls. <laughs> We're supposed to sleep during the night. So do your studying. Do the worst first, the hardest first, while the sun is out. The second idea is calendars. We're going to share with you different calendar strategies using an hourly, daily, weekly, monthly, semesterly, yearly. Surely <laughs> one of these will work for you. So let me talk about the hourly and weekly calendar. The hourly calendar is just that from 6 a.m. whenever you get up until probably shouldn't be later than 10 or 11 p.m. because we need to be in bed. You put down every hour what you're going to do. What are you going to study? Where are you going to go? When are you going to exercise? When's your quiet time? All that goes in the hourly list. Another idea, if that's too tedious for you, is to have a Sunday to Saturday list. Just putting down the things you're to accomplish on the day of the week. So an hourly or weekly calendar. Okay. And for some of you, we're, the monthly calendar may seem a little bit larger, but it's something that's going to help you. Now, you may have a planner that your guidance counselor gave you at school. You can look at this planner and you, begin, you can begin to write your assignments in your planner. For example, if you see on the 24th of March 23rd, I have an exam, I have a test, but I can begin thinking, okay, in three weeks, I have a test. But I also can put my study time. I want to plan my study time. And if you see on this monthly calendar, I have planned, I'm going to study one hour for that test. So when that test time comes, and I'm going into one of my more difficult classes, I've already put in four hours that I've studied for that test. You can see it, and therefore you can do it. This other idea is to have a semester calendar or even a year calendar. And this is similar to what Dr. Waltrip was saying, putting those big things ahead of you so that they don't sneak up on you. It's amazing how fast here we are, the end of February, next week is March. So if we have this semesterly calendar on our wall where we see it every day, it's going to reality is facing us every single day that I can't forget about that April 12th assignment. It's, it's going to be here. So this semesterly or yearly calendar. The second idea is to do list. I really like to do list. So we're going to talk about three lists by importance, dump it list, and a not now list. So Dr. Waltrip, talk to us about this one. Okay. This list, things to do today, this is the this is the way that I typically operate. Things you need to do by the order of importance. This is how my brain thinks. I put the hardest things first or the projects that are due immediately or due that day. I put those first and then other things that I know I need to do, they they fall in line in other places on the list. Yeah, and then the next day you carry over Yes, um, and they become more important. Well, my favorite to do list is the dump list. This is how my brain works. 
everything I need to do, I just put it on a piece of paper and it's with me until I've crossed everything off or until that piece of paper is so ratty, I just need to transfer the things I haven't done to a new piece of paper. This has saved me so many times just dumping it down. I think about it, I put it down. So this might work better for you. And when ideas come to you while you're studying, you might want to write it on a not now list and complete it later. What that means, you can stay focused. You know you have your priorities, things that you want to do, but you can have a separate list. When something comes into your brain, oh, I need to call that person, I need to do this chore, but you also know you need to study, have your not now list. That way you will accomplish everything, but you will do it in the order in which it needs to be done. I use this one when I'm trying to be real quiet and have my private quiet time. I always think of something I need to do when I really need to calm myself. So I have a little list for when I'm more active mm -hmm. to do later so I don't forget. So I, I really like this one too. So we're halfway through the ideas for you for, for this part. With the person who's in the room with you, wherever you are, would you tell them, um, what do you think about one, two, or three? Which one do you like the most? So we have four, uh, three more to go. The next one is preparing and cleaning, budgeting time, and goal setting. So since this was your favorite, why don't you talk about it this one? It was my favorite, preparing and cleaning. This is something that I talk with students about a lot. So it's Monday, we meet again. <laughs> we want to be prepared for our week. So you can take time, use 30 minutes each Sunday night to prepare for the week. That's valuable time that we have. You're going to begin thinking, I need to clean my clothes. I need to make sure that I have everything in place for this mm -hmm. week. Another idea for when you're preparing is looking at your calendar on Sunday night, not waiting till Monday morning to see, okay, what's happening this week? Let me go ahead and take a sneak look what's happening two weeks what's the end of this month using those calendars we just talked about you want to look at that on Sunday night. And the, um, this is what you're talking about mm -hmm. finish this idea for yeah, us, so you want to make sure things are in order you're going to be a better student, if you know where things are. Not that you have to be the most organized person in the world we're not encouraging you to do that, we just want you to be a better student and feel capable so your backpack. That's really important when you are walking in school, you want to make sure that you have all of your supplies, make sure that you have all of your textbooks um, or worksheets that your teacher has given you pens papers protractors whatever you need for your math, and you want to clean it out. Mm -hmm. Clean that backpack out take some time to do that that way you can find things. And I had mentioned clothes for the week, mm -hmm. so um, this is a trick that my dad always did. We had four children in our household, so he would have us choose our clothes for the entire week. So it was laid out, there wasn't chaos at night, and there wasn't chaos in the morning. Mm -hmm. So, And yeah. then with doing that, knowing what we were going to wear for the week, we would also look at our hygiene products. Do we have enough shampoo for four girls with long hair? <laughs> Do we have soap for the week? Things that, toothpaste, things that we might need to run out and buy at the store so that we're not having a chaotic night or that yeah. the family's not having a chaotic night the night before. And so that's a Sunday night activity. We're mm -hmm. doing all this on Sunday night. This suggestion for Saturday though, Saturday should be a cleaning day. And we don't expect you to stay home all day long cleaning. Your parents might, but we're not saying that. We're just saying to <laughs> do some tidying up. Like Dr. Waltrip was saying, tidy up that backpack. Your study space at home or wherever your study space is, is nice and tidy. Your bedroom knows you know where things are in your bathroom. And it just will make the week go better overall as a student when these things are the case. Mm -hmm. Our next one is to budget time. Now we like to talk about money and budgeting money, but we really do need to budget our time. So I have some ideas here for us. We don't have to stop all the fun. No, we're not saying that, but we do have to budget the fun. Our students on campus, they have this meal plan where they can go in the cafeteria all they want, 
but they can only go to the fast food place a few times a week. Mm -hmm. And they have to budget when they're going to eat fast food and when they're going to go in the cafeteria. It's the same idea with time. We have to budget. I'm going to allow myself two hours of playtime on whatever your playtime is. But if your study time is only 30 minutes, that's really messed up. You need to budget more study time and less playtime. So you don't have to halt the games, just plan them. You don't have to terminate your recreation, but we do have to control it. Especially when we're in high school, we've got to start thinking of our time as a budget and not time just is so free. This last idea is about goal setting. Yes. And so goal setting, SMART is an acronym that we hear a lot in education. And I'm going to explain what the acronym is for you. S stands for specific. You want your goals to be very specific, understanding I'm going to be able to accomplish this. It's not the thought of, I'm going to go to class or I'm just going to be a good student. Right. You might want to make a very specific goal. I'm going to make an 85 or higher. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that would be a measurable goal. M stands for measurable. So I want to make an 85 or higher. That's the measure. An achievable goal. You know what you can do. Mm -hmm. We believe you can do it. We know your parents believe you can do it and your teachers believe that you can do it. These goals are achievable. Mm -hmm. So you want to set aside study time uh, goals where you're able to do that and relevant. Your goals have got to be important to you. Mm -hmm. And I know that they are important to you, which is why you are all here. Um, it's something that is important to you and also time bound. For example, if you set a goal for studying, you want to you want to think about how much time it's going to take you. As you saw on the calendar, I set aside one once a week for one hour to study for one exam. It was time bound, specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time bound. And these are the what, what our goals need to be. And this, this SMART acronym is helpful for all walks of life. So specific enough, like Dr. Waltrip said, a lot of times students will say, I want to do better, better. Well, how do you measure better? So what does better mean? Mm -hmm. And if it means um, I'm not going to I'm not going to be late anymore to first period. OK, well, when are you going to reach that by 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 May when school's over or are you going to hit it by in two weeks from now? That's the idea behind these. Wow, we have hit six of our ideas so far the worst first hardest first sooner than later all kinds of calendars three different kinds of to-do list preparing and cleaning on saturday and sunday budgeting your time just like you would budget your money and smart ways to set goals again where you are in your home wherever you're located right now would you tell somebody of the six, which one is the most meaningful to you? Go ahead and chat about it. I wish we could hear all of your responses and I wish that we could know which one you like the most. We were able to tell you which one we like the most. These are really great <laughs> strategies for life in general. So this is where we are in our agenda. We're about halfway done. You say, OK, you've given me these six strategies and you can use them all. But the next four are really how you can be an overall effective student so that you can implement the strategies we just shared. These ideas are your mind, your body, emotions, and relationships. And this is the way we have a whole body, whole mind, we're, we're one being, and how we use everything so that we can be effective. So I'm gonna talk about the mind. We have to have a mindset 
that time is important and valuable. Mm -hmm. We have to realize time is not just this invisible thing, because it is invisible, but this is this thing that is a tool. It is powerful. Think of all the idioms we have with the word time. Time is money. Time is precious. Time flies. So now is of essence that in high school, it's time to really get your mind focused that time is valuable and I really can't be wasting it. And I have to let my mind realize that the very first slide we showed you with ways to waste time, we don't have time for that constant scrolling. We don't have time for unlimited fun. It's time for me to realize Time is precious and valuable, and I have to use my time to be a strong student. So that's the first way. The second way, Dr. Waltrip's going to talk about. The second way is, thank you, to think about our body. <clears throat> um, our body is important. It is a gift to us. Thinking about our body, uh, our body is part of learning. If you want to be a better student, you want to pay attention to your body, understand what your body is saying to you, and begin to move, particularly when you're studying, you want to be able to exercise, maybe stretch. <clears throat> um, pardon me, I have a little tickle here. So uh, exercise is important. Mm -hmm. We know this from physicians, take 20 minutes a day to get out and do a little walking. This is why health classes are important. For those of you who are in band, um, you know that this is important, you're out in your summer camps, exercising is going to help your brain. It releases endorphins, but it also prepares you to receive information. And something else that helps you to receive information is sleep. Mm -hmm. Sleep is extremely important as a student. Have a set bedtime, mm -hmm. plan your routine, brush your teeth, take your shower, plan your routine for the next morning. When you do this, when you take some time in order to enter into sleep, then you are going to sleep better and you will wake up refreshed. You will be able to do all of those tasks for the day. And then also nutrition, um, making sure that you are not eating all the junk food, as Dr. Bradford talked about, eating those healthy pieces of broccoli before <laughs> you eat the cookie <laughs> and it's going to help you. Yeah. And I just want to hit on this a little bit too about this idea of sleep, how it's really important that sleep happens at nighttime and not in the middle of the day. And I know that this might sound a little bit preachy and a little bit like we're moms, but the truth is research has been done that REM, rapid eye movement, is supposed to happen from around 10 to midnight until around 4 a.m. So if you're awake from around 10 or midnight to 4 a.m., your brain is missing out on that important REM sleep. And the rest of sleeping in the middle of the day is like cat naps, and those don't sustain us. So we really, of this whole list, want to encourage you to sleep yes. during the night. <laughs> the next idea we have for you the whole person is emotions. We all have emotions and we all sometimes struggle with controlling them and sometimes not. I will tell you this, something I've learned over the years, comparison steals joy. Yes. When we compare ourselves to our friends, the looks, the grades, the opportunities, the skills and talents, when we become comparing, we will lose our joy. So I want to encourage you to face your emotions. If you need to talk to somebody, if you need to talk to a teacher, a therapist, a, a friend, somebody in your church or community group, speak to them. The other reminder is perfection is not going to happen. It's just not. So sometimes students have told me I didn't want to turn in that homework assignment because it wasn't perfect. And I said, oh, no, no, no. 50 points is better than zero points. So even if it's not perfect, facing that, realize you'll never be perfect, go ahead and turn it in. And my favorite one of this is an attitude of thanksgiving. 
There are so many young people in other countries who aren't allowed to be educated. We have a society where our students in America are allowed to be educated for free. It's such a unique blessing compared to other countries. So changing our mindset of I have to go to school to I get to go to school, I'm allowed to go to school. So realizing of comparing is going to steal my joy, I'm never going to be perfect, and thankfully I can be educated. Having that change of emotion will help you as you study. In relationships. Um, we don't learn by ourselves. We're not alone. We're not meant to be alone. We are meant to be in relationships. Even Dr. Bradford inviting me to participate with her in this. I'm very grateful for this relationship. Mm -hmm. So for you all in high school, finding a mentor is something that you may want to do. You may already have a mentor and we're grateful for those mentors. But a mentor is someone who is just a couple of steps ahead of you. It might be someone who's in high school with you. It might be a teacher. It might be someone at your church or a family member, but someone who could help you along the path and just explain some things. For example, here at school, freshmen always receive a, a mentor, mm -hmm. sophomores and juniors who can help them with the next steps, things that they don't know. Giving and receiving, this is really important in relationships. Mm -hmm. Um, we want to be able to give to others. You want to be able to do service projects mm -hmm. um, and, and be thankful in your giving as Dr. Bradford talked about, but receiving is also important. Mm -hmm. You are worth it. Mm -hmm. You are worth it. You have a lot of people that care about you and receiving is important. You want to be able to learn from others, things that they will tell you and healthy connections. This is a lifelong skill not just for your school now, for your education now, but it is for college and it is for going beyond college. You will begin to network when you start working in jobs, in your careers, when you go to graduate school. So make those healthy connections. Start now by asking older people questions. <laughs> and uh, you may see that it's, it's very valuable and beneficial. I, I love this idea of having a mentor. Um, I'm 50, I'm in my 50s, <laughs> and I have a mentor who was my college professor. She's in her 80s, and I still go to her for advice and sometimes just to pour out my heart of what happened that week, and she just listens, and there have been times where she has just said, I am so sorry that happened to you. She has no great wisdom, but a mentor is a really great idea to assist you. The reason is because when our mind, body, emotions, and our relationships are healthy, mm -hmm. then those number three, those six strategies will just be in sync so much better. So now we're gonna put it all together. We want to know what your questions are for us. So Alex, would you help us out? Absolutely. First of all, thank you all. Thank you, Angela. And thank you, Luan. That was a wonderful presentation. And um, yeah, let's go straight into some questions. Just a reminder to everyone, there are a toolbox towards the bottom of your Zoom screen with one saying Q&A. You just simply click on that, open up the box, and you can type in there any questions that you might have, which some people were already kind enough to throw in some questions. So um, we'll start off with the one right off the top. Um, you were mentioning calendars earlier. So this person is wondering if it's okay to use some kind of calendar app that they might have on their phone to help keep track of things. I love that question. Sure, if that works for you, um, my suggestion is to always have a paper one. And this is why phones can die, phones can get broken and cracked. But if we have a paper um, calendar that we have just to guide us, I think that is a two ways to help us be successful. Wonderful. Thank you so much for that answer. Um, we'll go to another question here from Noah. How do you deal with conflicting priorities? Hmm. That's you want to hit that one? Do you want me to hit that one? You can start and then I'll tag you. Okay. <laughs> I like that one a lot, Noah. When you have conflicting, 
my, my thought is to split it up. So if you have an hour to give 30 minutes on this project and 30 minutes on the next, if you have, if you're fortunate enough to have two hour block time, an hour and an hour, I would, that's what I would do. I would split it up. Um, and I would also ask your mentor <laughs> or your teacher or somebody who is wise their advice. Cause sometimes they might be able to look at the directions with you and, and say, Hey, this, I think this might take less time. So why don't you start on this one? That's my thought. That's a great thought. And Noah, that is a very good question because we do have conflicting priorities at time at, at times. Um, seeking the advice of your mentors, your teachers is really important. Um, when you have a lot of decisions to make, it's good to write it down on paper. Mm -hmm. Sit down, write it on paper. Um, as we mentioned, the to do list, which one has a heavier weight? Is this for school? Is this for family? Is this for church? Um, who is the authority? Um, and and if you'll do that, it may help you make some decisions as to which one. That's a great one, putting it on paper. I like lists, so putting on paper and looking at it. And that, I want to piggyback off that. I've had students come to me and say, I am so overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. I have so much to do. Mm -hmm. And I will give them a paper and a pen, and I'll say, just start writing down everything you have to do. And as they wrote it down, nine times out of 10, to use that phrase, nine times out of 10, they look at their list and say, oh, it's not as bad as I thought. But when it's just swimming in your head, there's no concrete knowledge of what you have to do. Mm -hmm. So yeah, put mm -hmm. it on paper. Wonderful. Thank you both for that very uh, clear responses. I'm sure that's really good advice for everyone listening in. Um, our next question is, in regards to sleep, how long do you recommend for students to be effective? I'm not a doctor, <laughs> but I recommend at least nine mm -hmm. for, for young adults, um, at least nine hours. And I know I said least, but maybe at least eight. But if you can hit nine, eight or nine. Mm -hmm. It's really important. Um, in your teen years, mm -hmm. um, teenagers produce more melatonin than adults do. So you need that sleep. And some of you have probably heard of melatonin. A lot of people use it as a, as a sleep supplement, but you have more than adults, so you need that time to sleep. And in preparing for sleep, um, something that you all are probably aware of is that you want to turn your phone off. You want to turn your electronics off. This is part of that preparing to go to bed. You need to make sure that the distractions are away from you so that you can get that sleep. I'm so glad you said that because I was going to say that next. So I know it's so hard. It's hard for adults too, but to, I had this for my timer to make sure we didn't go over, but putting it away, putting it in the charger, putting it away, not by your bed, Oh, it's so hard putting it away from your bed so that when your alarm goes off, because most of us use this for an alarm, when your alarm goes off, you have to get up out of your bed to go turn it off. <laughs> That's another trick to help you get up if you're having a hard time getting up. But that that screen is hard on our eyes and it's hard on our emotions. So just what Dr. Waltrip said, put the phone away, go brush, go floss and have it somewhere else. Eight or nine hours. Wonderful. That was really good. Um, on to the next question. Um, what are some good ways to get rid of your time wasters when wanting to study? It's hard, isn't it? Because we all have them. We're all guilty. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> you want to start or me start? We do. And of course, I'm thinking of that phone as a time waster because I'm guilty. You know, it is a no brainer for me if I'm just looking through my news feed. And that's usually what I look through is my news feed. Um, but ways to get rid of that time waster, I begin to think of the priorities that I have to do. Um, and that calendar that Dr. Bradford had talked about, prioritizing, having a to do list, those are things that are going to be helpful to you. It's not to have something else to do, but it's helpful to manage, to help you manage all of this time that you have, because we actually have a lot of time we in do. our day. We mm -hmm. do. I would add to that, listen to your gut. Mm -hmm. So when we're on this thing, we all have a gut mm -hmm. and we're on it. Our gut kind of tells us stop, stop. Mm -hmm. 
stop. <laughs> so listen to your gut and stop. And, and I think Nike is rich for a reason. Just do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're rich for that reason. To put it, and it's so true. Have you ever spent a night and you're antagonized? Oh my gosh, I really need to do it. Really need to do it. But you watch the movie anyway, and you don't enjoy the movie. <laughs> Just do it. That's what I have to tell myself a lot of time. Luan, just do it. Oh, one more thing. And then we'll go on the next question. Yep. Saturday morning, if I get up and put my exercise clothes on and go for a walk, as soon as I wake up on Saturday, I'm very productive that entire day. Mm -hmm. But if I get up on Saturday, go to the couch <laughs> just to rest a little bit more, I'm very unproductive Saturday. It's amazing. So movement makes us productive. Mm -hmm. Thank you for asking that question. question. Yeah, it's an excellent question. Um, I have another question here from Pamela. Um, she experienced a lot of accommodations at her high school for her daughter. Uh, when looking at colleges, what would be the main thing to ask to make sure accommodations are accepted and met at the college level? I'll take that one yeah. <laughs> as director of disability services. Thank you for asking that. The first thing is if you're bringing high school documentation, some universities will accept high school documentation, some won't. So that's the question, first of all. For example, we're a small private Christian college, so we accept high school documentation. However, that high school documentation is IDEA, Individuals with Disabilities Education Act. Well, we're under ADA, Americans with Disabilities Act. We're not K-12. So technically, we don't have to honor anything from high school. Mm. But I know testing is expensive. So I will honor the high school IEP or ISP. I will honor it. And the honoring is a quiet testing space with time and a half on test, and that's it. If your student needs a test reader, a scribe to write answers, double test time, then I have to have something current, nothing related to high school. So that's why I would ask, what will you take for documentation? For a physician? Yes, yes. Um, depending on what the disability is, mm -hmm. um, I will take letters from doctors, depending. Doctors can, can um, through testing, know if a person has ADHD or other physical disabilities, but a medical doctor, a family doctor, a pediatrician doctor cannot tell if there's learning disabilities or cognitive impairment. They don't have the, the ability to do that part. Okay, wonderful. Thank you so much. That was a well-spoken answer, and that was a great question as well from the audience. Um, let's go on to this next question. Uh, what is the best way to help with time awareness? Sometimes lack of time awareness can perfect, uh, prevent effective time management. I love that. I have a couple of ideas. Watch. This, I'm a bad example. <laughs> I <forgot my> watch. <laughs> but wearing a watch, $5 at Walmart, Target, um, thrift store, Dollar General, you can get them really cheap. And learning how to tell time what are those clocks called? I don't even know this kind of clock. With it, I'm looking at one, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9, 10, 11, 12. Learning how to tell time with that. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of young people don't know how to tell time because they focus on the digital clocks, but mm -hmm. learning how to tell time, that is so helpful because you know where the minute hand and the hour hand are going. The other thing is um, using your timer on your phone or your watch or the microwave. When you unload the dishwasher, set the timer. How long does it take you to unload the dishwasher? I did that last year because I was getting aggravated with my husband that I always had to do it. Mm -hmm. And so I realized, well, Juan, it only takes you four minutes. Why are you upset? Mm -hmm. So that helps you realize how much time different strategies and chores take. Mm -hmm. What's being, your thoughts? Being reflective, <clears throat> you, you can become aware of yourself you're aware of your body. Um, mm -hmm. For example, I know when I need to stand up. Mm -hmm. I know when I need mm -hmm. to take a small a small walk if I've been studying or if I've been reading for a long time. Be aware of yourself, but also be aware of the outside. Um, staying inside all the time just helps us not understand time. True. If we're outside, we know it's morning. We can generally gauge when it's noon. We can gauge when it's late afternoon and evening. So 
you can stay on pace if you're aware. I love that. Go yeah, outside. Excellent. Excellent idea. Um, we'll finish off with this one last question here. We're kind of running low on time, so I'll just end it on this. Uh, do you find music can be distracting when studying? Uh, I know that everyone studies differently. So I kind of want to generalize that, you know, if music yeah. is helpful for one person might not, it might not be helpful to others, right? That's true. If it's helpful for one, it may not be helpful for others. But what I do discourage all students, I discourage them from listening to music with lyrics. Yes. Because you get hooked on the lyrics rather than what you're working on. The other thing I discourage students from doing is listening to music but you know what the lyric even though there's no lyrics you know the lyrics mm -hmm. you start humming mm, the words even though the words aren't there so my suggestion if you're going to listen to music my suggestion is jazz because classical. it has that classical music because with jazz it has that it's not a a, a predictive mm -hmm. predictive beat yeah it's a beat that you're not going to be able to predict because it's the drum and the classical music. We know from studies it does good for the brain. All right. Well, Luan, Angela, thank you both so much. Um, unfortunately, we are running out of time. It was so, fun. Hope you yes. all enjoyed it. Yes, I'm sure everybody is giving both of you a huge round of applause in, <laughs> in the audience. Um, can't hear them. We can't see them, but we know that they loved um, everything that you presented today. Um, for everyone watching, you know, the learning differences option in our Fair Stop virtual fair is still available. We have interactive booths. You can watch videos, download material, chat with admission representatives. Um, we do we are expecting representatives to be in their virtual booths from right now until 8.30 p.m. Eastern time. So you should you can head on over to the Fair Stop virtual site and you'll be able to check out all the booths there and even speak to someone. Uh, that concludes our expert presentation, how to win the game, beat procrastination, slay distraction, and protect the clock. Remember, you can come back to this session anytime to watch the recording, same place you found the link. And once again, Luan, Angela, thank you both so much for taking the time. Have a good day, everybody. Bye-bye.